Hi everybody, welcome to this video about the fourth solid principle, which is no other than the interface segregation principle, or in short, ISP. You will come to find that the interface segregation principle shares a lot with the Lisco substitution principle, which we discussed in our previous solid uh, principles video. But what does the interface segregation principle stand for? Well, it actually says that classes should not be forced to depend on interfaces they are not using. In simpler terms, the interface segregation principle suggests that a class should not be required to implement an interface if it does not use all the methods defined by that interface. Instead of creating one large general purpose interface, it's better to create several smaller ones, uh, more specific and tailored to our needs. Now, here on our code, we will use the usual recipe where we have uh, on the left uh, the code that violates the principle and on the right, we will uh, work our way fixing that. Um, but before I show you that, I want to show you some Java snippet. And if you come from the Java world, it should say a lot to you. Here is the interface segregation principle violation right in your eyes. Uh, actually, uh, here we have a class that implements the mouse listener. Now, even if we just in, we are just interested on the mouse click and nothing else, we are still forced to provide an empty implementation about the re remaining um, interface uh, um, stubs. And if you see here, if we click, we see an interface with several method definitions. Okay. Now, if I come to remove one of these, my code will complain because my class doesn't implement correctly the interface. So this is a classic violation where I'm not interested on the mouse pressed, mouse released, mouse entered, or mouse exited cases. I'm only interested on the mouse click case. And for that, I need to provide empty implementations, even for the cases I'm not interested in that. Okay. We can uh, fix that with some adapter approach, but this is out of scope here. This is just to show you that this is a very classic example, and it was the first thing that came to my mind when I first heard about this principle. Now, here we will see that uh, we have uh, an interface that defines uh, fly and swim actions, okay? And um, we have a class uh, and um, we define eagle, an eagle, which is a bird, and it implements the bird actions. As you will see, because birds don't swim, we provide an implementation for a flying, but we have an empty implementation for swimming. The same thing happens with a penguin. The penguin provides an implementation for swimming, but provides no implementation or an empty implementation for fly. In our previous video, we provided implementations that were throwing an exception. We could do the same thing here, okay? Uh, but we chose to provide just no implementation. The duck is the only bird that can both fly and swim. And for the sake of a duck, we have defined an interface, okay? But for the sake of the duck, we shouldn't uh, have problems with any other type of birds. So how can we fix that? Well, before we fix that, let me run the code and show you the problem. As you see, make flyable works for everything, okay? Works for our eagle, work which flies super high, works for our duck, but for the penguin, we provide an empty implementation and we have nothing here. Then our eagle is not swimming, so we also have no um, print here. We print line just for the duck, which swims low, and for the penguin, which swims fast. Okay, so here you see that we provide code that actually does nothing, and this is bad practice. Okay, so how we solve this? Now, to solve this, we will go, as I said, by creating several, several smaller interfaces. So we don't need those bird actions anymore. Okay, instead of the bird actions, we will create one interface for swimming and one interface for flying. Now let's start with the flying one. 
and we will say interface um, flyable and the flyable will define the fly function. Now, our other interface, which is uh, the swimmable, will define the swim um, function. Okay, now, instead of our birds implementing the bird actions interface, in our case, our eagle will implement the flyable. And you will see that when I do that, the override here will pose no problem and it will simply remove the swim. The penguin will implement the swimmable, but it will do nothing about flying, okay? Now, the duck will implement both the flyable and the swimmable. And now we have made our definitions fine. Now, to make a flyable fly, we cannot pass any more bird action. It doesn't exist as an interface, okay? Bird actions don't exist anymore. In place, we have the flyable and the swimmable. So instead of passing a flyable, a bird actions interface, for flying birds, we will provide a flyable, and we will say flyable fly, and for swimmables, we will pass a swimmable, and we will have our swimmable swim. Sorry, that should not be flyable, it should be swimmable. Okay, and now you come to see that our fix is this. Now we don't provide an empty implementation for something that is not used. Now we get a, a compiler error, so this is not valid anymore. So now we come to have just correct code. And that was that simply the um, uh, the interface segregation principle. I hope you found it useful. See you on the final one. Take care.